Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Roy Ruto. I'm a software developer. I work with Honor, um, and I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. So uh, this is my first time at State of the Map, and today I'm going to present to you about um, a tool called GCDA um, and how it's being used for uh, humanitarian mapping um, in Somalia. So, um, so just a bit about Honor. Um, what we do is we provide data solutions for international development. Um, some um, of the tools that we've built, uh, Honor.io, this is a data collection platform. Um, what it allows you to do uh, is to author forms, um, carry out surveys, and uh, export the data from those surveys. Uh, OpenSRP is one of, of our other tools. Um, it's a community health worker platform. Uh, it's being used in Pakistan um, and Bangladesh for um, antenatal health healthcare programs. Um, one of the other tools is Mspray. Um, if you if you are there in the morning, I think um, my, it was presented by Matt, one of our colleagues, um, who's uh, here with us today. Uh, and you can also go to github.com on IO to. Um, Get a look, uh, have a look at one, uh, s some of the projects that uh, uh, we've done. So um, just, to, just to give a bit of context of, uh, about what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so in the past year, there's, uh, there's been a, a really bad drought in, uh, in East Africa and S Somalia to be specific. Um, so the, 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 the rains have, have failed, uh, food harvests have, have gone down and this this is really affecting uh, the communities um, especially in Somalia and the the poor communities uh, who live in these areas are, are facing challenges because of this drought um, um, and uh, aid, aid agencies are, uh, are predicting like that this this is one of the um, like worst humanitarian crisis crises um, like since World War Three, so um, th this the map you see there is a, 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 like a vis visualization of some of the data um, uh, for Somalia, uh, and the indicator that's being um, uh, shown on this map is the food security levels for different regions in Somalia. So you can see that a really large area um, is being like uh, affected by. Like uh, they're at emergency levels, some are uh, in crisis levels, like the areas down the coast, and um, the, yellow, the, the yellow areas show the stressed areas. So, um, what's what's being done by um, like to to help the communities uh, in this area to 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 be able to handle this drought? So, um, a lot of international uh, agencies. Um, uh, are committing funds to reach out to communities and and try to help them to be more resilient to um, to be able to to survive this drought. So um, UK Aid, uh, one of the um, uh, agencies, has pledged a uh, hundred million uh, pounds um, for uh, like towards this drought. So. This is this is where we come in uh, as owner, and um, this is where we got the opportunity to uh, to build a platform for them to be able to um, uh, help help them report uh, on this crisis. So, um, uh, w one of the things they're able to do is track progress towards uh, uh, towards the commitments they've made uh, for these funds, and um, as you can see here, uh, the the various uh, sectors, as you may call them, uh, food security, nutri nutrition services, uh, safe drinking water, emergency healthcare. So uh, under these sectors, there are different indicators that, uh, like UK aid want to, um, uh, the, 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 they want to uh, see progress to, towards their target. So this, this is kind of useful, like um, uh, it, it gives a good summary of uh, uh, how the funds are being used. 
Uh, but what what you really can't tell using this is um, you really don't know uh, like on the ground what's uh, what's happening, who's been reached, um, what um, areas uh, are being uh, let's say uh, ad say overreached or which areas n are not uh, being reached. So that's that that's where maps come in, and um, we. We built an integrated response platform uh, for UK Ed, and um, one of the things uh, that it does is uh, it visualizes data that's being collected by uh, uh, NGOs that are working with DFID on the ground uh, to to collect data on the crisis. So, what what this helps um, uh, these uh, NGOs and UK Ed uh, in general is that is they able to to monitor to monitor to monitor the evolving crisis and to be able to better target resources so um uh, th this is really useful like to uh, to see which regions uh, are probably being um undersupplied uh, for example this uh, shows acute uh, what are the re the death cases um and with this they able to to like um uh, focus the efforts more um, more to the areas that are undersupplied for, uh, let's say, water services and uh, emergency health services. Um, so the next map or the next example is um, a mapping of nutrition services, um, generally uh, in Somalia. So um, on the 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 map on uh, on the le or rather the first one, uh, you could you could see that like. Uh, facilities uh, being marked, being mapped more to the northern side of Somalia, and um, the cool thing about this is you can overlay uh, like different um, uh, uh, different info information uh, from different sources. So this shows you like uh, some areas to the south in red um, are are not accessible. So the 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 ones in red, yellow, red, yellow, uh, green shows accessibility. And the triangles uh, show um, uh, the, where the facilities are. So you can see that, like in the red areas, there are really no facilities. So um, this gives a story of like um, this, uh, these areas are not accessible maybe due to uh, uh, terrorists. And um, uh, like this uh, makes it easier for uh, the NGOs like, uh, to to focus maybe efforts on uh, getting um, more facilities into those areas and how they can work with um, security forces like, uh, to reach people that uh, are affected in these areas. Um, the, the other uh, uh, map shows uh, nutrition site access. So uh, the, the the dots the, the dots you see on the map are uh, settlements. Uh, they could be uh, refugee settlements or uh, just normal settlements. So, um, this this gives a clear picture of areas that uh, do not have access to nut nutrition sites, and uh, th uh, these people need to like go down there and set up. Like uh, in Selbur, um, uh, they should set up facilities there to be able to reach uh, the people down there better. Um, <coughs> so, one other thing that's been happening um, uh, during uh, this response is um, uh, UK Aid is partner partnering with other organizations, um, uh, TransTech and Mesh to be specific, to do third-party mon monitoring. So uh, this uh, this organization usually uh, calls the uh, the beneficiaries or people who have been given cash um, and. Uh, what they do is they, they call them up and uh, ask them whether they receive cash from um, uh, certain NGOs that are distributing cash to the area. Um, uh, ask them what they use the cash for, and uh, and and whether they they use it for tax or uh, or something else. So um, the 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 good thing about this is uh, it it introduces accountability. So. Um, uh, as you can see on the map, uh, it, sh it shows um, uh, s like 
a time series of the, the weeks during the year. This is uh, data from this year. And th this data is like um, on a weekly basis and um, uh, the, the, the calls, the, uh, I'm not sure the number, uh, probably a thousand to five thousand calls a day. And and uh, DFID usually wants to see this like um, uh, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. So this is really useful to them to um, uh, uh, go back to the NGOs that they're giving cash to, and uh, maybe ask questions on uh, why not why are funds not going to certain areas, and um, and and how they can uh, uh, like make ma make it more effective to re to reach those areas. Um, so this this is another uh, map uh, that shows uh, nutrition center performance. So. Um, this gives a story of uh, uh, which nutrition sites are, uh, are performing well, uh, which ones are not, based on admissions. So, um, you uh, uh, another uh, feature that uh, we 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 added to the platform uh, is you can do filtering to uh, look at the specific partners that um, are running these facilities, and this way this like really uh, gives gives you like the granu granular details or granu granular uh, information that um that you need like to uh to 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 view data for all these uh, facilities um so they also use this for third party uh, monitoring data for these facilities so apart from the data, the data they get from um the, the NGOs um uh, they also uh, send out that party uh, monitoring parties to go to the facilities and actually confirm that the data they get from uh, the facilities uh, is actually what uh, the NGOs are reporting. Uh, so this, uh, like this map, um, uh, gives a clear clear view of uh, whether the facilities are meeting the demands. Um, so um, the, the underlying platform that powers uh, this platform that DFID is using uh, um, is called Jesida. Um, you, you, as you can see in the, in the icon, there's a, uh, a wildebeest uh, uh, in the icon. And maybe uh, a quick question to, um, to guys. So who can guess what Jesida means uh, or which language it's in? Okay, <laughs> yeah. So Jesida, Jesida is uh, a Somali uh, name for wildebeest. So we decided to call this Jesida uh, because uh, it's mainly being used in Somalia, and it's tracking data uh, that's related to climate change. And um, maybe, as you know, there's um, uh, there's usually a, a, like a large wildebeest migration um, in East Africa, and it usually happens due to climate changes. And that's th that was kind of the idea behind the name uh, of the underlying platform. So what what GCDA is? It's uh, it's a data integration uh, and inter interactive map uh, visual library, and it works off a, a map visualization sp a specification that we are calling MapViz. So uh, it's in JSON, and uh, it's it's a declarative map um, uh, map schema and it's kind of an extension of Mapbox GL style spec, uh, if anyone has um, worked with Mapbox. Um, and this is what it looks, looks like. Um, uh, it might look a bit familiar for anyone, anyone who's map, worked with Mapbox. So it, uh, the idea here is to uh, make it easy to, uh, to pull data from uh, different sources. And um, uh, let's say you have a CSV file and you have uh, boundary data. Um, uh, maybe hosted on Mapbox, uh, and and you want to uh, match match the data to th to the regions. Uh, this this is an example of how you can uh, quickly build a coral plot and uh, map total displacements uh, or like visualize total displacements, and uh, uh, you can define uh, various properties um, on what you want it to look like. Uh, you can uh, do some clustering, and um, Roy, it's one so minute left. Okay, 
Um, so the, the, the reason why we, uh, or, or rather the, pro the challenges that uh, we, uh, we encountered uh, building this platform was uh, data was being uh, frequently updated. Um, the geography uh, source format was, was not standardized. It came in uh, as JSON, as, as CSV, like uh, in so many formats. Um, and those, some of the data sources was mi missing geospatial data and there was no basic interaction. So let's say, let's say you want to do some basic analysis. Um, this wasn't possible. Um, some of the few problems that uh, uh, that we have generally with sharing map visualizations is um, uh, usually the, 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 this uh, it's you can't really interpret the data. Like when we get this data, what do you know? How do you know to uh, indicate uh, whether uh, this indicator should be red, green, or uh, or yellow? Um, they're usually shared in PDF. Uh, there's vendor log login. Like you're forced to. Uh, use certain tools, and if you want to share the map, you have to uh, use the, that tool. And the like, th this the data qu quickly grows out, out of date. Um, so this is just an example of how um, uh, you could map geometries, and uh, that's your CSV data. Um, so some some quickly some of the features that we support uh, in this tool: uh, uh, multi-source aggregation. Uh, CSV data joins, uh, coroplets, uh, time series, and group layers. Um, just an example of how you could quickly uh, do a, a time series. Um, and this is an example of one of the tools we've built for the Ministry of Uganda um, to visualize uh, facility uh, visits in, uh, in, uh, by pregnant mothers in Uganda. And this is, um, this is being used by Slum, Slum Riddlers International to um, to identify slums and and they use this to see how to plan how they can reach those communities and empower them. Um, just a quick example of how you could uh, uh, style the underlying uh, data. Uh, these are roads. Um, so I'll quickly jump this um, uh, kind of the architecture, some of the tools we used, and the the. The idea around this tool is uh, we want to make it really simple uh, to for for people who don't code um, uh, to set it up. So um, uh, this is a basic structure of how you can set it up. You just include your library and uh, you define your layers or nodes, and then um, configure your application and um, it runs out of the, out of the box. Um, so the roadmap. Uh, we plan to release this uh, soon, um, uh, so uh, we are working hard to clean this up, uh, support other visualizations. We want to uh, be other other people to be able to use this to embed maps, uh, do high resolution exports for reports, and also have a hosted uh, uh, map with spec builder. Um, so special thanks to Dan, um, he's uh, in the room who helped uh, build this application. Um, our partners and implementing team in Somalia, Transact and Mesh, and UK Aid for funding this work. Um, so this is the team I work with in Nairobi. Um, and sorry, you have two minutes for questions. Thank you. Um, you can go to you can you can visit jcida.onalabs.org to um, uh, get to know more, know more about the project. So. Thank you very much.